In this session, we're going to look at configuring the Hubble exporter. This is a feature of the Cilium agent, which allows you to write Hubble flows to a file for later consumption as logs. The Hubble exporter supports file rotation, size limits, filters, and field masks, so that you can manipulate the data that's exported to files inside of the Cilium uh, containers, so that you can collect them using a logging uh, exporting system, maybe such as FluentD, and then bring that into your own log analytics platform or SIEM environment. With the Hubble exporter, there are two methods in which to export. So the first one that we're going to be looking at is called the static exporter. And the second is the dynamic exporter. The static exporter accepts only one set of filters and does require you to restart the Cilium pod to change the configuration. However, the dynamic exporter allows configuring of multiple filters at the same time and saving the, those outputs into separate differentiated files as well. Because this second dynamic configuration uses a config map, it means that restarting the Selenium pod uh, does not need to be done uh, because changes are applied dynamically to the configuration after around 60 seconds. So let's dive into my environment and we'll start to look at the static exporter first. So first and foremost, I'm actually just gonna straight away reconfigure my Cilium environment. So if we just check the health of that, so I'm gonna run the Cilium status using the Cilium CLI. We can see that it's installed, got Hubble Relay and Hubble UI set up and available as expected. And we can see here that I'm using the 1.15.3 uh, version of Cilium. For this feature, you do need to be using 1.15, whether that's the uh, open source edition or the Icefail and Enterprise for Cilium edition. So we're going to apply my Helm config. Um, we're going to tell it to reuse the existing values and then also append in the values from my export uh, values file. And we'll take a look at that at the moment. And as I mentioned, because we're using um, the uh, static export, so it does require us to restart the Cilium pods. So I'm just going to do that manually now. And then whilst we wait for that to go online, let's have a quick look at my configuration. So inside of my values file, we can see here that we've got Hubble, we've ensured that it's kept as enabled. And then from an export point of view, we configured the static settings, we've enabled uh, the static configuration, and then we've set the file path that we want to be output to inside of the Cilium agent container itself and that's where we're going to pick up those logs and um, there are a couple of other configurations that are available as part of this and we'll look at some of those in a moment and um, however one that we're not going to cover today but to call out things like setting the maximum file size that will be generated and um, how many files to keep if it hits a certain file size and whether or not those files should be compressed into a tar file as well um, and then there's a couple of performance tuning options we've got from a storage point of view as well. And we'll, we'll have a quick look at those in a second. So first and foremost, let's see if Hubble is available. So we're just waiting for that last pod to become available. Okay, so Cilium is fully rolled out now. So it's as easy as viewing the files inside of each of our Cilium agent uh, pods as running this command here. So I'm just going to exec into uh, one of the pods from the daemon set and I'm going to tail the location that I set inside of my helm chart there as well. And now we can see I've got lots of uh, scrolling there as we tail that file as new uh, JSON output is appended to that as well. Now, at the moment, I've not configured anything here in terms of tuning. I'm just outputting the raw file straight away into, uh, sorry, the raw output straight into my file. So I'm capturing everything inside of the environment. Um, and that's not always what we want, especially if we want quick, easy troubleshooting where we take that file and analyze it onto a different system. So what else can we do with that? Well, the ability for both the static and also the dynamic um, exports is the ability to have a not allow and deny lists inside of the export configuration. In terms of the static environment, um, again, you, you don't have as much control and you'll see why when we get to the dynamic environment as to why that's probably the better option to use. 
But in terms of how do we generate these lists, because again, getting your head around this can be somewhat complex, the Hubble CLI actually gives you a really great and easy way to do that. And it has a argument called uh, print raw filters. So if I paste this command in here, let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. So we've got my normal Hubble observe command. We're looking for anything with verdict of dropped and error. So that will basically go into an allow list because those are the only things we want to see. However, I also then want to say, I don't want to see by using the not argument, anything from pod tenant jobs namespace forward slash core API. By using the print raw filters, I'm now going to get a nice output, which gives me an allow list. So this is what would go to an allow list configuration within the Hubble static exporter. And then a deny list gives us two options as well. Because I used the uh, pod argument, uh, this gives us both ways. So anything which is egress from the pod and ingress to the pod itself. We could also uh, further define that by using, for example, hyphen hyphen from pod and hyphen hyphen uh, to pod as well. So let's have a look at that into a little bit more detail. So what would happen if I wanted to apply this? Well, again, we've got the ability to do that through Helm values, or alternatively, we can just modify directly the config map in this instance and then restart the agents as well. So if I wanted to patch and just add an allow list, so we're only capturing dropped and error um, as the verdict types, so we can just allow this inside of the config map here. Um, alternatively, if we need to be a little bit more complex, so as I showed you before, where we've also got deny lists as well. Um, again, I've got a quick example here for you. So again, patching the same config, and I can pass through this deny list argument uh, or key value inside of the config map. And here we've got the same again, where we're just denying uh, anything which either is going to the cube system namespace or from the cube system namespace as well. There's also a couple more examples on the Cilium docs IO environment. <laughs> if we wanted to look at doing this using Helm, then we can use this command here. So again, I'm going to do the same upgrade. I'm going to uh, make sure that my Hubble is enabled, that static, uh, the static exporter is enabled. And here, because we've got uh, two options in that deny list as well, it was two break lines in terms of that filter. Here, we'd specify that in an array as array uh, zero and array one as well to push that through. And that would figure that out in the config map for us in the background as well. So small nuances. So if you wanted to, to disable the static exporter, it's as very simple as running this command to delete that configuration from the um, config map. We just need to remove the export file path and that will automatically disable the static exporter. However, um, as that restarts our pods for us, because we use the Slim CLI command to do that, so it does that automatically, we will also need to uh, clean up the Hubble events as well, potentially, inside our environment, especially if we're not going to restart the Cilium pods just yet. Um, so you could run maybe a little command that gets uh, all pod names uh, using the label for Cilium agent and then maybe read those into it from the array and then run something like this as well. Um, it really depends how you've got your environment set up and whether or not you need to do some manual cleanup inside of that environment as well. So I'm just going to clear that down. <laughs> So the second piece that we want to look at is the Hubble dynamic exporter. So as I mentioned before, the dynamic exporter allows configuring multiple filters in its own config map and doesn't require us to restart Selenium pods most importantly as well. It gives us a little bit more control over the different filters that we use and which individual files that we send that to. So if I now just go into my Helm environment and I'm gonna run this command here, um, once applied, it takes about 60 seconds for that config map to the dynamic exporter to be picked up and used by the Cilium agents as well. So what we're going to do whilst we wait for that to happen is I'm going to uh, run this command here, which shows you my values. It's very similar to the static exporter where, again, we're under the export config, but here we have dynamic, we've enabled it, and then we've got our configurations. So we've enabled that config, so it builds that config map for us. Um, and then we've got the content of there. So we can see that we've got two separate arrays worth of data here for the two different 
output files that we're interested in. So the first one is called tenant jobs. And very simply, we are going to send this to a config map of called tenant hyphen jobs, which matches the namespace that I want to capture here. We're not going to do anything fancy with things like field masks, for example, um, but we are getting any source pods. This is any um, egress traffic coming from that namespace. If I wanted a destination, so if I wanted that ingress traffic as well, I could have another line here that would also say um, uh, uh, hyphen destination underscore pod and then tenant forward slash jobs to the namespace as well. We're not excluding any data here. Second configuration is a little bit more advanced. So we're going to capture everything from core uh, that goes to our core DNS running inside of our environment. We're going to send that into its own file as well. But here we are adding field masks as well. So we're basically telling it which uh, fields within the JSON output to capture for us. That's going to be the time stamp, uh, source namespace, source pod name, destination namespace, destination pod name, verdict and summary as well. Because we were interested in the DNS, uh, logs in particular, by adding summary, it means that we pick up the DNS responses as well. So we can see what the requests are and the replies from that point of view. And then basically for our include feed filters, we're looking for any traffic going to and from any application, which is using the label of k 8 app cube uh, hyphen DNS. And again, no exclude. Again, we could always just uh, uh, target this in a slightly different way if we wanted. Just want to show a couple of different options here as well. So let's just make sure that our Cilium Daemon set has come back up again and is all running. So now our Cilium environment is up and running. Um, just one quick call out with that. However, I did notice in the background a very slight misconfiguration there. Um, so actually when we're configuring this field mask here, um, summary comes with a capital S. Um, if you misconfigure anything like the field mask, for example, um, when you do describe on a pod, because the pod will crash because the configuration is incorrect, um, it will call out the line saying they can't apply um, a particular configuration inside the dynamic uh, exporter and the reasons why. So you've just seen that there is an error message on the name core DNS there. Um, and the reason will have been this field doesn't exist because it had the lowercase, so it can't match that to an, an exact Hubble flow itself okay so so now we've got that up and running what that will actually do is configure um that dynamic config in the background so if i do kubectl get cm in the namespace of cube system we will see here that there's a flow log config created so going forward we can continue to up, uh, iterate on our helm values uh, that we've been setting or for example um we can also edit this uh cilium flow lock config going forward as well and i'm going to show you that quickly now in terms of what details are in there and then hopefully what you'll see is actually is quite self-explanatory so it's taken those details from our value yamls file um, and you can see here as well i've got those two sections of contents this is my tenant jobs configuration and then below there we've got this called dns configuration so we can see here like i can again uh, add some more or remove field mask if i wanted to configure change that file path uh, set uh, different labels in place well if it's not quite capturing what i was expecting inside of my environment so first and foremost, let's have a quick look at the tenant jobs. Uh, okay, so the reason what's happening here is actually we're connecting uh, to a pod inside that daemon set and let's have tenant jobs log on. That's slightly embarrassing there. So what we can do here is let's just try and uh, edit this ever so slightly and capture uh, a pod running uh, on a node there we go so the issue there was it was trying to capture that uh logs file that's an, on a cilium pod that's running on a node where the application for the tenant jobs isn't running so there is no hubble data there because the hubble data is going to be captured uniquely on each cilium agent pod for each node so again it's going to pick up the traffic for that node that it runs on and what we can see here obviously we're capturing that for our tenant jobs 
application and then for our core DNS. So again, the reason why we're not getting that there, um, very similar uh, issue is because for the core DNS logs, again, we need to make sure that there's kind of a Hubble config that's capturing all that as well. So again, because I've tuned my environment, we're not going to get that for absolutely everything because I also want that summary data, which tells us exactly which uh, FQDNs either being requested or responded to as well. Um, so if I do silly again, Let's see if we've got one on here. There we go. So we've got that same pod. We can see that here. And then hopefully what we can see, for example, is we're getting that summary information here. And we can see that that's an answer response to the API of GitHub, which was requested uh, by the crawler pod from funnily enough tenant jobs and um, so really really powerful quite a lot of configuration options from there um, and then obviously once you've got this set up then the next steps for that is to configure something like fluent d which would grab those logs from the local container and export them into your log system or seam environments so that you can use them